also, we saw the U.S. dollar index about 90.76 uh, this morning, pressing again. The, the decline in dollar index is putting, was putting uh, the euro and the pound sterling on a greater footing, again on the back of a whole lot of global uh, news around the virus vaccine distribution in the United States, in the UK, the extension of Brexit talks uh, for perhaps for another few days and weeks and months into the new year, and all of that giving some measure of optimism, uh, as it were. So the dollar uh, came down a little bit. Oil prices surged now at the doorstep of $51 a barrel. Metal price is still uh, in the very hot or at least warm territory. So here you have the currencies with the South African rand, which has a very stronger correlation with the rest of the emerging markets and currencies at 1503. That's uh, a green shoot there for the rand by 0.56%. Kenya shilling is still trying to find a new a way below this new level, which came through just about a week ago, one, about one tenth of a percent. Uh, the dollar pressured it just a little bit further. And the Egyptian pound pressured by the dollar to 1570. Nigerian currency, 394, depending on the market you're trading. But this is at the I and E window, the investors and exporters window. Take that away. Let's check in with the um, East African equities market. And that's the Nairobi Securities Exchange, 147.48. Two tenth of a percent in the green. Negative reading for today for Dar es Salaam Stock Exchange, Uganda Stock Exchange, 0.03 percent. Uh, positive for the day, 12.74, and the Rwanda Stock Exchange flat on the first trading day of the week, 148.12. That sums it up on the data side. What about the news side? And that's where you go back to Kenya, where the Capital Market Authority is issuing a report and say, look, they want to look into why foreign investors, or called FPIs, dominate the Nairobi Securities Exchange on the first part. And the second reason, why do we have big five companies on the Nairobi Securities Exchange dominating the stock market? So the Securities and Exchange Commission is a little bit uncomfortable with that and said they want to uh, look into that. Why? Because if they, when the five big companies sneeze, the rest of the market catch cold. And they want to find out, they want to reduce the level of foreigners investing in the Kenyan market. That's the first story there, just to explain it to you. Uganda's uh, kept keeping its uh, uh, central bank official rate at 7% and keeping liquidity to financial institutions. Samoa Cement is the biggest uh, cement company in Rwanda, uh, doing business in a few other East African countries, listed on the Rwanda Stock Exchange uh, just a couple of months ago within the pandemic. Revenue, 1%. Up net income, 1.9 billion Rwandan franc for the period 2019-2020. And the Egyptian Ministry of Finance and Danske Bank, they are, uh, which is in Europe, 8.8 .8 million euro as a deal for Ethiopia there to keep the economy. Uh, and the merge exchange on Seychelles Islands, which is a coin-based exchange, has listed 5 million ordinary shares of solid oak insurance on the main board of the exchange. That's the summary. Let's get back home and talk about the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industries annual international trade fair for 2020 ended yesterday. That was Sunday. It was the first time in more than 100 years history of the LCCI that the annual trade and commerce event would take place under a virus pandemic and the domestic economy under extreme pressure, especially for the exhibitors and the consumers. Let's chat now to what the experiences and the lessons were for the LCCI at this year's event. As we turn now to Gribeli Dahosa, the Vice President and Chairman of Trade Promotion Board at the Chamber. Good evening, sir. Good to have you here. Awesome. Well, congratulations, you folks who are able to hold this year's exhibition in the first place. So tell us about the turnout of the exhibitors at the trade fair that ended yesterday. Well, the turnout reflected the fact that we had the COVID situation. It, it, the turnout was large by itself, but it's smaller than what you will have in a full trade fair that uh, most of us uh, who, are, who regularly visit the fair will see. So it was full, there was significant activity for a new first-time visitor, but it's lower than the full, full trade fair that, uh, that will happen normally. So who are the main drivers of this year's fair? The big, the medium, small enterprises, and were they local or foreign? 
companies? These were all local companies. The main drivers were clearly the small and medium enterprises. They were clearly dominant uh, this year. Uh, the reason being that they, it's much quicker for them to turn around situations, to take decisions, and uh, come to the fair, given the short time that we have to give notice to the business community. So it was really uh, the small and medium enterprises, and they generally were quite happy uh, because you had a lot of visitors that were coming in to do year-end and Christmas shopping. So for them, it, it, it was a very successful fair. Uh, but why did you decide to hold a fair uh, at the LCC despite the COVID-19 period and, the, of, the, of course, the economy in recession? Why? Yes, I, I think that even a lot of visitors and exhibitors were pleasantly surprised that we could hold it. At some point in August uh, this year, when the COVID figures were coming down and the uh, the state government was opening up various parts of the economy, the schools, the markets, and uh, the, the full rollout of markets from a few days a week to, to full all week. We decided to contact the Lagos state government and, and say whether, since all markets are open, and, and, and generally the, 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 the language of government was that the economy has to keep uh, expanding and growing, and make up for lost grounds. So we contacted the, the Lagos State Governor and asked if we could still hold the fair under certain conditions. And he graciously approved it with the condition that we work with the Lagos State Safety Commission. So from that time, the Lagos State Safety Commission did their, a, a thorough uh, inspection of the premises. They set up complete COVID-19 compliance guidelines. And we worked with them through September to, to this month, to, to the, the date of the fair, in fact, because we had moved the fair from November to December. So they were there with us, and any visitor to the fair will see very strict compliance with the COVID-19 conditions. That, that was a basic condition for the fair to take place. And then we have these safety marshals working with us. They were very visible everywhere. We had uh, emergency evacuation protocols for any cases that were found. We had ambulances uh, on ground. All the works as the Lagos State Safety Commission wanted them done. So that, that's why uh, we were able to pull it off. And the governor was uh, there at the beginning and at the end represented by the deputy governor. And, and they, they were satisfied with the protocols. Yes, so the, the, my question is, what did the trade fair actually reveal about the state of the economy, especially the disposable income of Nigerians and the exhibitors themselves, the overall business confidence environment? Well, interestingly, for the small and medium enterprises that you talked about earlier, they, they did extremely well. A lot of them were now saying that perhaps we should move the fair permanently from the first Friday of November to the first Friday of, of December because they saw that a lot of the visitors came shopping for Christmas and for year and for those who wanted to travel in the, in the weeks, in the next week. And, and they, they, they were quite happy. In terms of incomes, the, 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 the middle class and uh, the families that do this shopping, basic shopping for very basic needs, uh, still do that. So that was what we saw. There was a very large uh, crowd in most of the fast-moving consumer goods exhibition stands. And so that was where the, 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 the most of the shopping was concentrated. There was very limited uh, activity in the durable consumer goods and, of course, in, in more expensive items. Mm. Uh, folks were looking for more of consumer, uh, consumer products, consumer goods, whatever in the consumer goods space, rather than durable goods like refrigerators, deep freezers, and things like that. Yeah, again, right, th th right. that's, that's the way folks have to feed first, the first human need. Thank you so much, uh, Gribeli Dehosa, uh, the uh, vice uh, president and the chairman of the trade promotion board at the LCCI, uh, the trade fair under the COVID-19 pandemic. The EFDB group is keeping energy at the forefront of Africa's economic conversation. Join us again.